Hi, Scissorin here, and I want to do reflect a bit about bosses in the current state of Path of Exile. And uh, I'm also going to make a tier list. So uh, I had to try and make up like a, like a tier list thing here for me. So that is what we're going to do now. So this is the tier list we've set up so far. I'll talk a little bit about why we've set it up like this and talk a little bit about each of the bosses. F is the easiest in my opinion and S is the hardest. So Uber and Ziri, really, really hard. Um, I think it's, it's not as telegraphed a fight as a lot of the others. It's so easy to get clipped uh, and killed. Now, the loot of Uber and Ziri is really good, but let's just talk about the fights for now. And yeah, Uber and Ziri, I think it's a really cool fight. Even if it is less telegraphed, it's still fairly obvious what to do, right? There's no weird mechanics like the Awakener, um, where, you're, like, it's it's all, like, just kill her and don't get hit. Even if it's hard to see. Yeah, but, but the fight is such a clusterfuck that it is a really, really hard fight. So that is what I put as the hardest alongside the Feared. The Feared, if you don't know what that is, is Uber and Ziri, uh, the Shaper, the Elder, Cortex, and Chayula all at the same time. And it's random which combination you get to fight them. So you get two and then three. So it's a very, very hard fight. Here you literally don't have a hope in hell of seeing what's happening. But obviously it's not really a mandatory fight either, right? It's just for more splinters to fight the Maven. Next up we have Uber Elder, which is both the Shaper and the Elder at the same time in their uh, small little arena. And in my opinion, this is the best boss fight in Path of Exile. I've done it so much that I actually think it's very easy. I've actually almost done it on a level 73 lightning trapper one time with like a level 18 gem. Just to see if I could do it. I couldn't, but I did almost do it. But either way, it's um, just such a great fight in my opinion. It's you always It always makes sense what to do. It's a, it's a very, very straightforward fight and um, very well telegraphed. And you obviously you already know most of Elder's moves already and you already know most of Shaper's moves already. I think this is my favorite fight in Path of Exile, maybe. Maybe Maven. I don't know. I really like the Maven fight. But either way, Uber Elder is great. It's also got great loot. Uh, at least some of it. Actually, only one of it. Only the Watcher's Eye. But we'll we'll talk about all that later. Next up, we have Owl. Um, Owl is kind of more difficult based on mods. Same with Oshabi. Both of these fights are like all about like how much mods are on the area. And obviously, you can't roll the areas. Um, Al is still even a fairly prominent, like, difficult fight, even without mods. And you also, you just don't get to practice Al a lot. Wushabi is a very hard fight no matter what now, and especially with anything that's like fizz is extra, cold damage, etc. Um, and Wushabi way worse than anything else because she has no loot at all. Literally, it's a pointless fight. I think it's insane to me that I, uh, a fight like that is so difficult. Hidden. Uh, that's the five Breach Lords, and uh, it's like all the elemental Breach Lords and all the tool. It's pretty hard. It's extra hard for the build I did it on because they're moving, so you don't always get to do a lot of damage. And I didn't have that much damage. Let's say it's pretty hard. Obviously, like the newer a fight is, the harder it is. If you've done a fight a lot, it's going to be easier. That being said, I've done Uber and Ziri a shit ton, and I still find it the hardest. Cortex, uh, very hard for a lot of people because you don't know what it does. I think it's a very cool fight, and it... It's cooler when you know it, because I think this is one of the fights in Path of Exile that don't really make a lot of sense. Um, like, you have, like, the, you know, the attack that's similar to the Mar Malagara Whirling Blades, where he just teleports around firing stuff at you. That does insane amounts of damage. Uh, the, like, Embrace the Void or whatever he says, and the Black Spots come towards you, he teleports you and then slams you. Like... I think this is probably the fight in Path of Exile that encourages you to log out the most. On my, uh, on my Power Siphon, I don't have a boss killer right now. Uh, and I don't want to skip Cortex, right? Because the chance of a bottle of faith is great. I really want one. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm logging out like four times. So I'm like, I'm just, I'm just going to use my portals, dude. Just going to log out and keep potions up the entire time and just burst them down. Like, burst every fight down with potions. Because the, the character I have doesn't do any damage without potions. Katarina has, like, a little bit of a similar problem to the Cortex, where the slam is insane. There was a clip of Methyl recently where Methyl was like, okay, I'm being, she's teleporting around me, and then suddenly he died. And uh, this is uh, definitely a bit of a problem, something I don't like. I, I do want it to be very, very obvious when a boss is going to slam. Like, maybe not as slow as the Val slam, but, you know, along those lines, where it should be really, really obvious. They, they've done good slams. And I don't necessarily think the Katarina one is. 
Katarina one, it's like, haha, I'm gonna hit you no matter what. Like, most people are probably gonna get hit by that the first time. It reminds me a little bit of, like, game you play when you're kids. Like, slapsies or something? I don't know why you call it in America, where you, like, you, you slap people. Because Katarina will just say, oh, I'm slamming, I'm slamming, I'm slamming. Ha, <laughs> got you, bitch. Um, it's, it's a little bit insane. And, and the Katarina fight is, you know, actively punishing to do because it resets your board. The Maven? I think the Maven has an extreme amount of shock factor. Whenever it's a new fight, it's very different than anything we have in Path of Exile. I think it's such a cool fight. I love the Maven. I really do. I, I think it's really, really well done. I think the memory game is super cool. I would love to see more harder mechanics like this in Path of Exile. I wish there was an Uber version. I'm a big fan of like Aziri and Uber Aziri where the normal one is like a training version. And then you have like the hard fight. Like you've learned everything. Here's everything faster and harder. Uh, big fan of that. So yeah, I, I really do like the Maven. I've seen a few people saying they don't like the fight. I just, maybe they don't understand it. But either way, I love the fight. I think everything is really cool. I think it's a very well done fight. Probably the best well done fight. And I think everything is very obvious once you like, once you actually do it. Whereas I, I can't say the same for Awakener. I think Awakener, I have very mixed feelings about it. Um, but I would probably say Awakener is the worst fight in Path of Exile. It is very cool. Like the color scheme and everything, while like probably not good for visual clarity, like it's a cool fight. He has cool abilities, he has cool voice lines, but I, also, I hate and love the fight. First of all, why does he have four stages? Uh, I don't like that. I think that's kind of silly. Feels like one stage too many. Um, every time I get him into the third phase, I'm like, oh, last phase. No, it's not. Yoink. Here's another one. The cloud phase right now, like this fight needs a rework because the cloud phase is so pointless. The, the phase thing right now is just to have a phase. There's no reason. I preferred back when they chased us. Like, at least then you had to, like, do something. You had to lead them away, come back, you know, whatever. Um, now they're so pointless. Now it's like, sometimes, yay, it fucked off instantly. Go next face. And then sometimes it's, he's just staying inside it. And I'm like, elevator music. He teleports a large amount. And it's not always, like, clear to people how he moves and how he teleports and stuff like that. It's also... I don't know, it's it's difficult, but it's the fight that's like had the most amount of bugs and things go wrong. Like, people are getting killed outside of the meteor maze if they're too close to the wall. People have like, he, at the start of this thing, he was sort of like firing backwards on the die beam. There, there's been a lot of problems with Cyrus. Um, I think this fight deserves a rework more than anything else. And I think it potentially could be such a cool fight. I love the, I love the meteor maze. Maybe there should be a warning, like Zana, like being in the area and saying like, run out of the maze or something like that. Because that I think is really good in the um, Elder fight and the Shaper fight where Zana goes, come to me. And she like helps and make sure like, hey, this might be a new player doing the fight for the first time. Like the number one problem I see people struggle with is when he goes up in the air and I see people just like, okay, when are you going to come back right up? Maybe there should be something under him that you could hit. To make him landing in. I don't know what to fix or how to fix it. But I, I feel like that's very unintuitive. And I've seen people literally wait minutes. Because I watched like new players do it for the first time. And it's very unintuitive. Uh, especially if like. I'm like. Things are maybe a little bit easier for me. Because my entire life revolves around video games. Right? Like there's very rarely new mechanics that I haven't seen before. A fight being intuitive for me doesn't really necessarily matter. When literally my entire life revolves around video games. And I do nothing else. That being said, I think uh, Awakener is a very, very easy fight and it is still fairly telegraphed, like, especially for me as someone who's done it quite a lot. Do you know what? I think I'm going to put it up a tier because maybe even harder. It's, I, I'm just thinking, like, it's, it's also, like, part of why it's so easy for me is because I've done it such a large amount. I've done it such a large amount. Um, but, yeah. I don't know. It, it might be around the same here. It's it's a hard choice. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. And obviously, they, these are all like, depends how much you've done them. It's just a fight I've done so much. But either way. And then on the easiest, Elder, Chayula, and Shaper. Um, these have sort of been out power creeped so much. 
that they're not really much bosses. Like, these are fights that I'm pretty happy to do on non-boss killers too. The Elder... The only thing that can sort of kill in the Elder is the last phase when the uh, the Ice Nova stuff comes out. Um, there is one thing I wanted to mention about the Elder. I think it could be a little bit more intuitive. So first you're fighting the Elder. 1v1 me mid bro. Uh, and it's just you and the Elder. And then you get him to like 30% and the Shaper comes, chains him to the middle, and the Shaper starts like channeling in the four corners, right? And you have to defend the Shaper. Now, I think maybe there should be some voice lines here or something to make it a little bit more clear that it's important to defend the Shaper. Because I bet you there's at least one person that's like, dude, I'm so fucking smart. I am going... I am going to uh, to let the Shaper die to do the fight faster. But then a big problem with that is that then you literally cannot drop a Watcher's Eye. You literally cannot drop a Watcher's Eye if you let the Shaper die. You have a 0% chance. And I'm sure some people don't know that. So that could probably be a little bit better. Chayula, very, very straightforward. Like, just don't stand near Chayula when Chayula is, like, doing the spinning thing. And as long as you have a decent amount of Chaos Rest, it's a very, very straightforward and easy fight. Good XP. And there's not much of a difference between, like, a normal Chayula and a pure Chayula, because they're already very similar in level. Shaper. Shaper is probably the best Telegraph fight in the game, where every move is very, very easy to see and avoid. Um, you have the Slam. You have, like, the beam, you have the balls. Everything is pretty easy, I think. And Zana comes out and says, Exile! To me! Or, like, defend me, Exile! Like, I, I think Shaper is one of the best designed fights. I think it's one of my favorite fights, actually. Probably second or third favorite. Maybe, like, favorite would be, like, Uber Elder, then Maven, then Shaper. Um, it's, it's a very, very cool fight. And uh, I like it. It's also very, very easy. It's been out power creeped a lot. Obviously, we have a lot of damage now, so the fight goes very, very quickly. We also have a lot of re a lot more regen characters that can just stand in the puddles and stuff than before. Let's play around a little bit with the loot. Let's uh, let's rank bosses according to their loot tables, and here, Awakener goes to the top. Pretty much every piece of loot that the Awakener has is god tier. The helmet, and like I'm not I'm not talking about market value now. I'm only talking about their usefulness. In, in comparison to the game, especially that I think of it as that you're an SSF player, right? How good is this item? Can I use this item on my characters? And every single item the Awakener has is amazing. Literally, and I think it's the only boss that has that. So we have we have the gloves. They're obviously very RNG, but if you hit like two or three corruptions on that, they're really good. And they're a cool item. Like that, that's a, a niche cool thing that I really like. And I'd love to see more of that in Path of Exile. You have the, the jewel, just like mandatory for some builds a lot of builds that i play need this tool um and the, the it's amazing the helmet is sick the helmet is crazy amounts of damage and just really well balanced uh, god tier helmet and then you have the savior especially again this league when we have like the whole the glove that makes you do more damage with your off hand than your main hand uh, makes this for a very good main hand weapon and yeah very very good and then on top of that you have Awakened Gems, which are amazing, right? I, uh, now, obviously, Awakened Gems can drop from other Conquerors, too. But, yeah, you have uh, the Awakened Gems can drop here. You have the, the Watchstones, which are temporary, but the other, some of them, like Terror, can be plus one to the map, so you can get up to uh, tier 19 maps. That's very, very cool. And there's so many different Watchstones. And uh, on top of that, you also have the Awakened Orb, which is one of the most powerful and coolest things in the game. So... The Awakener is on a tier of its own. Every single thing from this is awesome. Owl, the amulets are so incredibly powerful that he's probably probably up here with A. He also has that cool helmet that's really cool in Anime Guardian, but other than that, his loot isn't that spectacular. Uber Ziri, literally none of her loot is useful right now. There's like the Vertex, but I... I I don't know. I don't have that many great uses for the Vertex, and I feel like the Awakener Helmet is better for most of the builds I play. Um, this favor is a joke. I can craft a better weapon than this favor in, like, half a day of Harvest. Obviously, that's a bit of a problem with Harvest, too, but I I hate Path of Exile's aversion to uh, good boss units. 
I, I do understand the need for Eunice not being best in slot in every slot. But I also think that there's, there's an importance in boss Eunice being strong. Uh, and I think boss Eunice being strong is different than, you know, just generally all Eunice you pick up on the ground being amazing. Um, so, I don't know. I feel like all her, like, the, the garb, like, I mean, we, for, for the longest time I remember, we always say Vendor the Splendor. Uh, it's a cool MDX. It looks amazing. But yeah, in disfavor, like I said, it's a joke. That Zeri's promise is better than anything Uber Zeri drops. The the gloves are a joke. Like, I have so many other good uses for gloves. And if I, I don't know, most most builds I'm going to be leeching on, I, I probably already have Valpac, so. Um, so yeah, Uber Zeri's loot, kind of Pepega. Katarina actually has like quite a lot of good loot. I don't know whether to put her on A or B. We might move her later, but like she has like the Cinder Swallow is amazing. God tier flask and you get flask unveils. Um, and some of her other items are okay. Like, I don't know. I'm not a big fan of her like garb. Her garb isn't like the best. It's okay. Um, and then you also have uh, the the shield and the helmet. The helmet is used quite a lot. So yeah, she, she probably deserves to be B or A. And you do get to like do all the unveils and stuff. And I mean, yeah, it, it's okay. I think we'll keep her there. Chayula. Mm. Chayula basically only has the dreams, like the, the dream jewels they can drop, and they're like useful sometimes. But yeah, I mean, sure. Hmm. Chayula's a tough one. I'm I'm not like like Severed in Sleep isn't very good right now. The chests are kind of pointless, at least for most characters that I'm gonna play. Um so yeah, it's mostly about the dreams. So like maybe sometimes use them. Cortex. A S I don't I don't think he competes with Awakener. Like, I mean I love Bottled Faith and it's great. Um but um I don't know. Maybe it's somewhere in between. It's uh Cortex is like one of the best loot fights in the game. You have multiple things that can happen here. You can have the gloves, which are barely ever useful. You would need to get some insane implicits for the gloves to be good. You can drop Garby the Ephemeral, which is an insane anime guardian chest. You can drop, uh, and, and you can use it yourself as well. I've actually never done so. I've always used it on uh, anime guardian because you get crit immunity and immunity action speed wise. Um, other than that, you also have Bottle Faith, which is speaks for itself. It's one probably, yeah, it's the strongest flask in the game, hands down. It's insane. Uh, Bottle of Faith is ridiculous. And you have Nebulus, which uh, actually can always be useful. Like, if you get shit implicits, it's not. But Nebulus can drop with the explosion implicit, and then you hit jackpot. If you get an explosion Nebulus, it's like, oh my god, money. So I, I would place Cortex pretty high up. Elder, I think we're going to put here on B. It actually has pretty good loot. The stat belt is very, very strong. Obviously, it has the immunities on it, and it's very strong as a base stat belt for a lot of builds. Um, and it can so easily be double corrupted that if you get a 15% attributes, you throw 20 intrinsic catalysts on it, then it's 18% and then you double corrupt it and hopefully you get something good. You could get a really, really good belt. Now, obviously something you could end up getting for this is like, you, you can get all res and like, I think you can get percentage stats. Pretty sure you can. Um, so it's, it's a really, really good belt to be honest. Uh, the amulets are sometimes used. I'm not a big fan of the unique amulets. Uh, Nebulok is really good. Obviously, like, Hope Shredder and Shimmeron isn't really in a good spot right now. But yeah, there the others are pretty good. And then you have the Watcher Size, right? Um, they're, they're insanely strong. And, well, obviously not as good as the Uber Elder Watcher's Eye. One of the coolest chase items in the game. And Watcher Eye is actually my single favorite item in the game right now. The Maven has the Maven Orb. If it didn't, I probably would have put Maven down here. And if any of its loot was exciting, I probably would have put Maven up here. But, seeing as it's only the Maven Orb that drops, and that's kind of the only reason to do the fight, I don't really like any of the Maven loot. I think the Maven loot is a disaster. The only thing that comes close, in my opinion, to being cool... Actually, there's a lot, but I will talk about it. Um, the helmet. I don't think the helmet should have that insane of a downside that you need to wear blue rings. It doesn't have any life on it, which is insanely punishing for builds that are going to use it. Because it's not really a CI helmet either. Um, I, I think the concept is cool. 
But I, I think the Maven Helmet could probably just have all of that without a downside. And then it would be usable. Then it would be really, really good. Like, it's it's from the Maven. This is like one of the ultimate... Like It's like a penultimate fight in Path of Exile. Why does she drop, like, loot that is so conditional? I, I don't know. I, that, that, all of this bothers me. And let's talk about the belts. Belts is the single most powerful slot in Path of Exile. Right? Like, think about all the strong belts. We have Rustatha's Coil. We have Soul Tether. We have Replica Soul Tether. We have Headhunter. Like, we have so many. And we have influenced, influenced belts. Stygian Vices now. So, the belts, in my opinion, should add these charges. They shouldn't replace the Endurance charges. Because even... Let's, let's take the Endurance Charge Belt, right? It replaces your Endurance Charge Belt or Endurance Charges with uh, charges that give triple damage. That's really cool. But Endurance Charges are insanely powerful. So I think it would actually be like just pretty cool as chase items if they added these charges. So you have like 10 Endurance Charges and 10 triple damage character that like that actually makes it a really, really... It, it opens up for, like, you can actually do a lot of damage on a Dragonhawk. Like, oh, yeah, I have 10 Endurance Charges, but I'm actually using it for damage, too, because of this spell. Sure, I don't get the life recovery rate that I normally use, but I, I get a lot of damage. And I still, like, it's very worth it for me to invest in uh, Endurance Charges. So I think the belts should have been cool chase items. And, uh, yeah, they they should have um, they should have kept uh, the original charges. I think that would have been way better, in my opinion. All of her loot is very, very disappointing to me. There's a chest that I don't think anyone has ever dropped because it's so rare. And it's so weird because it's not long ago. It's at least a year ago that the Awakener came out and they really nailed that. Every Again, every piece. Like, the Awakener is perfect. And that is what is deserving of an in-game boss fight. They should have good loot. They are hard fights. So, it, that's a little bit tilting for me. Like, Maven's loot is a bit of a disaster um, let's see, S, A, B, C, D, F, F plus, F plus, 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 F plus, plus, plus. Uh, Oshabi's loot is so ridiculous right now. She, all of her boss uniques are terrible. Not one of them are usable. Arguably the helmet, but sure, have fun with your 400 divines to get something useful. And even then, Awaken Aurora being another helmet together and crafting, like you can very easily craft a better helmet than that. It's, it's arguably, in my opinion, never, never good. And the helmet doesn't really have anything else. So it's, you're just getting like a, a mediocre 6 helmet. Poggers. Uh, the staff is useless. Like, pr I, does she drop anything else? Like, all of her gear is kind of garbage. I think it's sad. Um, and then she drops infused beachheads. That's almost exciting. Um, because at least then you can upgrade the belt to like the, the improved belt with action speed. And that's good. But... Other than that, she drops Winged Scarabs. Oh, yes, I got a Winged Torment Scarab. I hate the Oshabi loot. I hate the Oshabi fight. Uh, I think this needs a rebalance and a redesign more than anything. Um, the the number one thing that I that tilts me about Oshabi... Actually, this happened to me today. I found Harvest and I was like, Oh, another Harvest! I'm on a roll! And I go in and Oshabi's there and I'm like, No! Why are you here? The fact that it's actively a downside over the normal outcome, like the special outcome should always, 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 always be better than the normal outcome. Right? That it should be a special thing. It should never be worse. And it is actively worse. So rant about Oshabi over. Let's talk about the Shaper. Shaper is very good. Not particularly hard, but you have Dying Sun. Really, really good item. Like, that's an amazing flask. I wish I had one. I've done like 19 or 20 shapers now and I don't have one. You have the amulet. The amulet is really, really good. It's uh, useful for a lot of builds and it, it's a cool item. You have the gloves. The gloves are insanely strong. Draw out Path of Exile, even though they're a very common item. We've seen them be very expensive. Um, sometimes for double corruptions and just generally like for, for builds doing like stat stacking and... Yeah, the gloves are very well done. So all those three items are good. And we have the boots, which I think sell for eight alchemy shards or something. Um, and that pretty much sums up the boots. And then you have Starforge, which is one of the greater disappointments in the game. 
Starforge deserved more love than it got. I think it's 500 DPS right now or something. It's very, very little. Um, both Disfavor and Starforge to me are very sad. They should be they should be items that are very, very exciting to get, in my opinion. Uh, which they aren't right now. It's incredibly easy, even with Alt Regals, to craft a better weapon than a Starforge, which is sad. I don't think one of the pinnacle bosses of Path of Exile should drop something that I'm like, I dropped one on SSF and I'm like, cool, I already made a better weapon than this day two of the league. Because uh, it's rare and it's cool and it's an epic item. It is epic. It looks cool. It's a cool concept. Buff it, please. And then we have Uber Elder, which I think actually might go up to S tier. I almost want to put it back down to A tier because it maybe we want to do this. Yeah, I think that this this expresses my thoughts better. So we put Shaper down to B. We put Uber Elder to A because honestly nothing like Cyrus is they've aced it. Everything is perfect. It's so well done. Whereas Uber Elder, um, the rings aren't they could be a little bit better. I feel like they deserve a small buff. Um maybe um maybe what I would add to the ring is that it could go from 40 energy shield to 60 life or 50 life. And then you have to divine it, right? So you might find one that has 40 ES and another that has like 2 life and you can divine between energy shield and life. Um, I think that would be a really, really, that still, that, that makes the rings a lot more usable. They are still used. They're not like a completely garbage item, but, um, you know, depending on the meta and stuff like that, they're not very much used. The quiver, quiver's pretty cool. Quiver's used a lot. It's a, it's a cool item. Probably needs a little bit of love. I, I do think it's very important for end game items from the bosses to be strong. Uh, and I think you could do with a little bit of love. The chest is amazing. The chest is so cool. One of the cooler items in Path of Exile, the, uh, I can't remember what it's called, but the chest that uh, lets you get uh, the chaos pen and the chaos damage. So cool. I, and it's like the, the entire mechanic is cool with the, the shaper items and stuff. So yeah, really, really cool. Other than that, you have Disintegrator, which is a disaster of an item. Disintegrator is kind of embarrassing. I I really I really want to ask like why? Why this aversion to Disintegrator ever being good? Because right now, ever since Uber Elder came out, Disintegrator has never been a good item. It has always been an item that you use just to use it. It has a big downside that you need to deal with, and with not too much work, you can make better other weapons. I, I wish it was more of a chase item. This could have been an insane, insanely cool item for, you know, that like joint playstyle, like that battle mage playstyle they want to do, where you are using Earthquake and then a spell. They could have made it that. It's not that currently. I I don't like the current state of Disintegrator. Like it's, yeah. It's sad. I think Disintegrator is such a cool concept that it deserves, at least for one league, to be, like, overpowered and strong. At least for one league. It doesn't have to be forever, but, like, it's never been strong. Never been good. I've used it three times, and I've had to, like, shoehorn it into my build. And I'm like, ah, there we go. We can clear maps now. Poggers, dude. And Voidforge? Voidforge definitely needs some love. That's, like, I've used it, like, twice. Didn't really like it to actually use it on a character, and then I used it once on um, anime guardian anime weapon, just because it looked so fucking cool, and it was actually decent. Again, not not super poggers. Um, Watcher's eyes, Watcher's eyes. This is probably the best chase item they've put in the game. The the triple Watcher's eye is, I I'd say it's the best item they've put in the game. It's it's amazing. It, it's so cool on so many levels because this item is good with just one stat on it. And then you have that like, I always forget this word, dude. Every, I just, no matter how many times people tell me, non-linear. It's like, it's like just, oh my God. If it hits two, if it hits two mods that are good for your build, you're like telling your parents about it. And, and if you hit three, you pass out. I had one Watcher's Eye 
that some guy in standard, like there was, it was somebody, I can't remember what league it was. It was a, a perfect watch with I. It, it, it had never existed until this point. And he had been searching every uh, every league, like every like softcore league. And he normally played softcore. He mained perma standard. He would play softcore quite a lot. Uh, and uh, I got this on hardcore uh, as a joint drop. It was, I was doing a service kill for somebody. And he, um, it was basically a priceless one. It was something like conversion, hatred, crit, and, and something else. And I can't remember, but it was like literally perfect for his build. And it sold for like 310x, which I got 150 off. It was great. Uh, and he insta-ripped that to standard. Because uh, he, he like played that league, switched his currency over to hardcore. Because you can switch currency between leagues that have been the same amount, like, alive for the same amount. So it's like, and that barely ever happens. You barely ever get something that exciting. I've had some cool watcher's eye. This league, I've had, like, two double clarity watcher's eyes. Um, or sorry, a two double clarity watcher's eye. And that's, like, insane. I'm going to make a build around that. It's, it's just such a good item. It's so good. It's so well thought out. We need more, like, that type of item. It's so cool. Mentor's Gamble, too, is actually a really cool item because of the same reason. Like, I love the RNG evolved, involved in this item. Like, honestly, like, it's it's so tempting just for that, like, if if the other items were good, I would I would put it up here. Because it's it's just, like, yeah, you know what? Maybe, maybe it does deserve it, just because Watcher's Eye is so cool. It's just such a cool item. I'm, like, I, I get excited every, even if it's going to be trash, I get excited every single time I see one. So, yeah, just beautiful. Best item they've ever done. So cool. Um, and then I don't really need to place these anywhere because they, they just drop the loot of the other stuff, right? Sure, if you're able to kill the feared, you can drop all of the loot from the people in the feared. So that's cool. But yeah, I, I just wanted to do, uh, to make this video, talk a little bit about the bosses in Path of Exile and, uh, the loot and the difficulty and stuff. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, thanks for watching. Sub if you like the videos, but more importantly, try to die less than I do.